So we've been kind of going through, uh, last week we started in uh, 1 Corinthians, um, and we're going to keep going because I think Paul really kind of speaks to us in a lot of ways. The, the challenge last week was, uh, are we following the wisdom of God? Are we, are we really kind of placing our hope and our trust in Him? Today we're going to keep going on that, and I'm going to ask you this, are you relying on the Spirit of God? Last week was the wisdom that God provides for us through His Spirit, but today we're going to keep going, so just to be ready, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, <clears throat> we're, going to, we're going to tackle this chapter today, uh, but my question to you today is, are you relying on the Spirit for absolutely everything you do? Do you rely upon the Spirit? I, I, it was interesting last night, well, the last two nights, if you know, uh, over the course of the last couple of weeks, I have... Uh, well, about a month ago, we took our pool out. So we had this deck that kind of wrapped around the pool, and we ripped the deck out, and now I have this massive pile of wood that's got like 10 million nails. I, I don't know who these people were that built the deck. All I know is that they loved a nail gun. Because these, and they're ring nails, so nothing pulls out. So anyway, so I decided we've got a garbage can, and we've been taking out a garbage can a week. And I'm like, this will get done in the year 2052, if I keep doing this. So I decided to burn the wood. So I'm cutting up little pieces. And of course, living in the country, uh, Friday night was the first night, I think, since we've been here, that there was literally no wind all evening. It was beautiful. But I, I love fireplaces. I love fire. And so I was sitting down. And as I'm doing this, I finally got to the point. I'm like, I'm just going to sit down and just enjoy watching the fire. And it just uh, it dawned on me, or it kind of made me think, that how many times do we think of like a new Christian? That fresh piece of wood. Because sometimes, you know, we have wood, that, it was stained on the top. Uh, but sometimes I put it in a, you know, nail side up just because I did. Uh, but it was the more clear wood. And as I watched it burn, I, I thought about this. I, I thought, how often does a new Christian come to Christ and they're like that fresh wood? They're just, they're, they're made new, they're made perfect. And some of that wood, it's kind of warped and everything, but it still looked new. But then the fire would start to wrap around it, and it would start to char the edges. And as it charred the edges, then, you know, if there was a knot hole in there, then it would kind of burn straight through there. But I just watched this wood being burned, and I thought, how often as Christians do we, we start out and we say that we are blessed, that we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, and then through life, life has a way of burning us. It, it, it starts kind of just on the edges, maybe underneath a little bit where we can't see it. We take our eyes off Jesus. We're that perfect piece of wood, yet the world, Satan, gets to us. And we don't rely on the Spirit as much as we could. It was interesting, some of that wood, I swear, would burn for, it took forever for it to burn, yet some of it would burn up very quickly. Often, many times in our life, or at least in my life, I have place my trust in Christ only to walk away. He didn't walk away, but I walked away because it wasn't fast enough and I didn't rely on his time. And, and because of that, I, I feel like many times I was burned, I was charred. And once you're burned and charred like that, you know, that wood can never be made the same. The great thing is, though, with Christ is we can be made new because of the Spirit. Because of the Spirit that lives inside of us, the Spirit that gives us all things. Mother Teresa once said, we ourselves feel that we are going to do just, uh, let me restate that. We ourselves feel that what we are doing is just a drop in the ocean, but the ocean would be less because of the missing drop. We try to do things, and we try to do it many times without the Spirit of Christ, and, and we start to catch fire. You know, things can go well, but how many times have you done things in your life and it's going well, but all of a sudden things turn bad quickly? And you realize, well, I've done it without the presence of Jesus. I've not relied on Jesus to help me through this or that. I've just done it because that's what I wanted to do, and it ended up many times failing miserably. The, the piece of wood began to get charred. 
it started underneath. You, you didn't notice it at first, right? Because things are going well. And when things are going well, who's the last person we think of? Let's be honest. For many of us, it's Jesus. Things are going well. Why do I need to pray? He's already taking care. He knows. I've heard the excuses. I've used the excuses. But in those times are the times that we need to pray even harder. Why? We, we honestly need to pray for humility. Humility with the Spirit. Because the Spirit's what, the one that's doing it, not ourselves. Charles Spurgeon once said, Wisdom is the right use of knowledge. To know is not to be wise. Many men know a great deal and are all the greater fools for it. There is no fool so great as a fool as a knowing fool, but to know how to use knowledge is to have wisdom. Last week we talked about the wisdom of Christ, the wisdom of the Spirit in our life. Today we're going to look at are we truly relying on that Spirit? Are we using that Spirit? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, Paul starts like this, And when I came to you, brethren, I did not come with superiority of speech or of wisdom, proclaiming to you the testimony of God, for I determined to know nothing among you except for Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I was with you in the weakness and fear and in much trembling, and my message and my preaching were not in persuasive words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, so that your faith would not rest on the wisdom of men, but on the power of God. Now you look at those scriptures and you go, man, I can't, I can't imagine Paul, if, if Paul walked in right now and said, I want to preach to you guys, like, I'm out. Like, come on. Uh, and I, honestly, I'd be like that with a lot of other pastors too. But we look at those people and we go, they're just so knowledgeable. They're full of wisdom. They're full of the Spirit, right? Paul is saying because 1 Corinthians, the Corinthian church, church in Corinth, they had this idea that they were extremely knowledgeable. They were the writers, the philosophers of the time. So when someone would walk in, if you weren't very well spoken, you'd be, look, you'd be looked at as a babbling fool. That'd be me. Because I, I, I picture most scholarly people who stand before a pulpit, have their notes, they don't move. If I were to do that, I would shake so bad that you would never hear me. Because I have to move. But Paul is saying, I didn't come to you like those philosophizers and those smart people. I came to you with one message, and that is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I don't have to use the sanctification and the justification and the righteousness of the saints. And the, because why? Because Jesus died for the poor and the sick and the fools and the people that just need him. I, I don't need to stand before you and use all these elaborate words so that way you think I'm smart. Because most of you know me well enough by now to know that's not true. But I stand before you as a man convicted of knowing Jesus. Paul says, I know Jesus. And it doesn't matter all these big religious words. It is, do you know Jesus and Him crucified? Because if you know that He was crucified, you know that He was raised from the dead. And if you know that He was raised from the dead, then that means He beat death. He beat Satan and He beat hell. And because of that, he's leaving himself with you in the Spirit. I mean, you want to you put religion in, in one sentence? Jesus came, Jesus died, Jesus rose, gave us himself, we're living forever. I mean, that's, that's religion. I mean, the Bible is all to things to help us to get to that point that we understand that religion doesn't have to be, and I hate the term religion, just so you know that. Christianity doesn't have to be so complicated, but it does have to remain in Christ and through His Spirit. Paul goes on to say, Yet we do speak with wisdom among those who are mature. A wisdom, however, is not of this age, nor of the rulers of this age, who are passing away. But we speak God's wisdom in a mystery. The hidden wisdom which God predestined before the ages to our glory. The wisdom which none of the rulers of this age have understood. For if they had understood it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. When we stop and think about 
Wisdom, wisdom is, is knowledge, but, but knowledge can be fools. And that's what Charles Spurgeon said. You could be the smartest, you've ever heard that? You could be the smartest person in the world and still be dumb as a box of rocks. Well, let's be honest. How many really smart people do we know that common sense is right out the window? And I love those people, don't get me wrong, but, but it's one of those things. Wisdom is the combination of knowledge and common sense. Of understanding that when you go to a two-year-old, you don't say, do you want to be justified in the faith of Jesus? Or do you go, Jesus loves me, this I know. When you go to a, a group of people, do you walk in and go, look at me, I've been Christianized. Or do you walk in and say, because of Christ's blood, I have been made new. See, wisdom is one of those wonderful things, and I pray for wisdom every day because I'm not sometimes very uh, good with my words. I, I stumble, I struggle, especially around people that I don't know. I can talk to them about a Bears game or anything, but sometimes talking to them about Christ for me is very difficult. And you go, you're a pastor. Yeah, that's just, it's tough for me. Because I, I, I want to get to know people. I want to just love on people. But sometimes when you start the conversations with, you're going to hell, did you know that? It's a bad idea. <laughs> Wisdom has taught me that. Wisdom is one of those things that helps my board from becoming charred. Because wisdom tells me I shouldn't go in certain establishments or certain places. I shouldn't do certain things. I shouldn't say certain things. That's wisdom. I know that I shouldn't. My grandma used to smack my hand. The worst thing that ever happened to me in my life is my dad, you know, I told you about the lump I have on my head. My dad used to, that was how I got punished. I literally have a, a, a permanent lump on my head. He used his knuckle. And he has a lump on his knuckle too. I looked the other day. I'm like, ha, old man. But I remember one day I was running through the church. And I will never forget it as long as I live. I was running through the church. And my grandpa, who was an elder in the church, grabbed my arm. And in a split second, grabbed my arm, swatted my butt, turned me around and set me back down. And I was still in mid-stride. And I stopped. I learned that I shouldn't be running in the church wisdom taught me I didn't like the swat on my butt. Knowledge also asked the question, can grandparents do that? <laughs> I thought you were supposed to buy me chocolate. That was wisdom. That was knowledge. Many times when our board becomes burned is how we gain knowledge and wisdom. Paul is saying that if we just remember to have God's wisdom, if we look at the next chapter, which we might cover next week, I haven't really decided if we're going to go there. Chapter 3 starts with, Brethren, I did not speak to you as, uh, as you were spiritual men, but I spoke to you as men of the flesh, as to infants. I gave you milk to drink, not solid food, for you were not able to receive it. Indeed, you are not even able to now. My question is, is are you relying on the Spirit? Have you went from a baby Christian and are you ready for the meat? Think of a baby. They're just so pure and precious. I think of my little grandson, Cole. He's, he's almost four months now, I think. Something like that. He's growing like a weed. Um, ever since his surgery, he's kind of packing on the weight. It's beautiful. I see pictures all the time. But I think about that. If we, we start, They started feeding him a bottle, right? And, and that's how he got his his milk, and that's how he got his nourishment, and that's how he got his strength. But as he gets older, uh, they'll, they'll take him off the milk, they'll wing him off the milk, and they'll start giving him more nourishing food, more real food, more things to fill his belly. Right now, he eats like every two to three hours. I mean, think of it that way. If we were to eat a, a Whopper every two to three hours, I, sounds kind of cool to me, but I mean... Think about, it would probably not be very healthy for us, right? Because it would fill us. It would fill our, our bellies. Paul is telling the Corinth church, listen, I didn't come to you. I, I could have. Paul's not saying that I'm an idiot. He's saying that I came to you as not knowing anything with the fear and trembling that you felt to make you understand the wisdom of God. I, I came to you to teach you 
to just know this, Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you, and as you get burned and singed from underneath, it's time to know the, the whole story, if you will. It's time to know the rest. He goes on to say, but as it is written in Isaiah 64, 4, things which the eye has not seen and the ear has not heard and which have not been entered that heart of a man, all that God has prepared for those who love him. Paul knew that going to the Gentile world was going to be difficult. He was the apostle to the Gentiles. He knew that they would have no idea what he was talking about. Remember that the Roman world back then had gods for everything. If you didn't know who to pray to, you just made up a god for whatever you needed. They didn't understand that one god could be in charge and over all things. Paul was trying to get them to understand that it is because of the God of, uh, of Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity, that he has prepared things for them. Verse 10, for to us God has revealed them through the Spirit. See, you could pick up the Bible all day long. Many of you do, I hope, read the Bible. But if you're not asking the Spirit to open your eyes and open your mind and open your heart, then you know what you're reading? A book. Before you start reading this, your playbook, your manual, before you start reading this, start with, Spirit, teach me. Open my eyes. The greatest part of this book, out of all the ten other books I've ever read in my life, is that this one speaks to me different every time I read it. It's the living, breathing Word of God. In other words, when you say, God, teach me, the Spirit opens your mind. It gives you the meat. It gives you a big old whopper, juicy, hot off the grill, right in front of you. So you can just ingest it and take it in, tear it up and eat it up. That's what He wants you to do with this book. I mean, not physically eat the pages. I'm... I, I, if you need fiber, I guess. But he, he, he means take the words off the page. Eat it up. Chew it up. Live it. Learn it. Love it. Because it is the Word of God. But we got to have the Spirit to help us. For the Spirit searches all things, even the depths of God. For who among men know the thoughts of a man except the Spirit of that man which is in him? Even so, the thoughts of God no one knows except for the Spirit of of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, so that we may know the things freely given to us by God, which these things we speak not in words taught by human wisdom, but those taught by the spirit, combining spiritual thoughts with spiritual words. But a natural man does not accept the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. And he cannot understand them because they are spiritually appraised, spiritually examined. But he who is spiritually examined, appraised uh, all things, yet he himself is appraised by no one. Isaiah forty thirteen says, For who has known the mind of the Lord that he will instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Our boards can get burned every day. Every day I believe that, that Satan's just lobbing the flaming arrows hoping that one sticks. And that board begins to get charred. And the more that we go without being in the presence of Christ, I believe that board gets more and more arrows. Th those boards that I would put on top of the fire, some of them I was kind of lazy and I didn't cut to fit inside the ring. And I watched, and you know, of course it starts burning in the middle, and eventually it would start here and it'd start here and start here, and then it would catch together, and then the board would become weak and belly in, and the flame would just engulf all the way around. See, when we are without the Spirit, when we are without Jesus in our life, that board just gets completely, completely covered in fire. I looked at that board, and I think, how often did I get to the point of almost being too lost? 
of, of, re, of just needing Jesus to restore me. And there have been times in my life that I was so lost. My board was being burned at both ends. It was in being encroached all the way around by fire. And praise God, Jesus pulled me back. He's the only one that can restore your wooden board. He's the only one that can take those deep wounds away. He's the only one that can make you strong again. And we have to remember to use the Spirit. We have to remember to be in the Word. We have to remember to know Him. That's why He uses the segue to go into chapter 3 to say, listen, when I came here, I taught you just basically Jesus loves me, this I know, which is a great starting part. We all love that song. And it is a great thing to always remember. Those times that were really dark for me is the times that sometimes all I could remember was that Jesus loved me. And that's all I needed because sometimes I didn't feel loved by anyone else. But I knew the creator of the world of all things said, Bill, I love you. And that's a great starting point. But then it yearned for me to know him more. It yearned for me to want to get to know who my creator is. Why would he do this? How? And some of those answers I still don't have. And that's okay. You know why? Wisdom tells me I'm not the smartest guy in the world. Wisdom tells me I don't need to be because I know the important things in life. I know that I love my Jesus. I know I love my God. I love my spirit. I love my wife. I love my kids. I love this church. I love people I've never met. Wisdom tells me I don't have to like them, but I have to love them. Wisdom has taught me that I don't need to have every answer to every question in the world. But I will one day. See, that's going to be the great day when we're met in heaven with Jesus and it says in Revelation that we will be given the knowledge of all things. We will eat from the fruit of knowledge. You know, the one that created all this mess will be freely able to eat from it. It will produce 12 fruits every month for the healing of the nations. I don't need to know everything now. It doesn't mean that I don't want to keep learning. It doesn't mean that I don't want to stop. But it means that I don't have to have all the answers. It just means that I need to put my trust in Jesus. And when I read this book, the Spirit will speak to me in such a way that I will gain more of his knowledge. Chapter 1, right? So my question is to you today, is are you truly relying on the Spirit? Are you giving the Spirit the time and effort? Are you, are you asking the Spirit? You know, yeah, if you've got to go to the bathroom, you don't have to ask the Spirit. Just saying. Just go to the bathroom. But if you're about ready to make a big purchase, why don't you stop and go, you know... Father, just help me with this purchase. It, it makes sense, right? I, I have really gotten to the point that I, I spend so much time in here. Yesterday, I just got to come in here. This week, I don't know if you noticed in the back, we have a, a new uh, uh, media center up there, waving at Chip and, and, and them. Or I'm sorry, Chip, your Chip. Uh, <laughs> Brad Cohen over there, uh, they, they, it wasn't that they were tall enough. They needed to be up another 12 inches. I don't know. But it's great. Thank you to the men who did that uh, and, and, and women that decorate. But when I came in here, they were here many times this week. And I thought, man, it's great. They're doing such a great job. Get out. Like, I, I just want some chapel time. I'm, just, I'm struggling with, with things right now that, that, that are just not making sense. I'll be honest and say that I had planned this sermon three weeks ago. Remember, I told you I had a sermon planned, and then Spirit said at you know, 3 o'clock in the morning, you're not doing that. I love it when he does that. He said, now's the time. Now's the time to bring this on to you. John Newton, you know who he is, right? The author of uh, the poem, Amazing Grace. He said, the chief means for attaining wisdom and suitable gifts for the ministry are the Holy Scriptures and prayer. You will not be a minister if you're not in prayer, if you're not in the Bible. Yes, you all are ministers. Remember, when you were baptized, you began a ministry. 
maybe not a pulpit ministry, but you began a ministry. So you are ministers. So my question is, is are you preparing every day for your sermon? Every day that you will meet people, meet your family, meet whomever, are you preparing your sermon? Because that's your life. Your life is a living sermon. When people know that you are a Christian, they will judge you for everything you do. They're looking for you to mess up so they can say, oh, there it is, typical Christian. Talking out of both sides. I love that. Yes, I am. The thing you miss about Christianity is it's for the fools. It's for the lost. It's for those that struggle every day. Christianity is not being about perfect. It's about striving for perfection in the name of Jesus. But it's called being human. You, you catch me? You're going to catch me. I guarantee you're going to catch me. Stay in this church long enough today, you're probably going to catch me. Because I'm human, but I'm forgiven. And I have the grace of Jesus. Theodore Epp once said this, As we trust God to give us wisdom for today's decisions, He will lead us a step at a time into what He wants us to be doing in the future. Guys, some of you guys are younger. Kids, I don't want to say kids, young adults. Uh, you're preparing for your future. You're preparing for what you're going to do. Let me encourage you this way. From the day you leave your mother's and father's house to go to college, to start a job, even now, walk in the Spirit. Start now. Don't let the world burn your board. Parents, grandparents, let's keep our kids on fire for Jesus, but not their board. Let's keep their life without sin, without the evil one. As we trust God to give us wisdom for today's decision. Jesus once said this. He said, why are you so worried about tomorrow and next week? And today has enough worry for itself. How about this? How about we all decide today to take one day at a time. And in that day, in that 24-hour time span, we determine the best way to serve our master, our king. Let's start by that morning, in the morning when you get up, I want you just to pray to the Spirit. I want you to just pray for wisdom. I want you to pray for knowledge. I want you to pray for peace and courage and strength. And in tomorrow, when, when, after you get done praying, I pray that your ministry is rock solid. That when people see you, they see Jesus. They see the Spirit of God Himself. And then tomorrow night, make sure you pray for a fire extinguisher. Because I guarantee Satan's going to be, he's going to have the, the automatic cross bolt headed right at your back. And if you don't put extinguish those flames, or the Spirit doesn't, it will continue to go on, and that's how our board can get burned. Today, I think it's the day that boards have to be snuffed out. We need to put them out, and we need to be re-strengthened by the Spirit of Jesus, by the wisdom of God Himself that lives inside of us. This week, my challenge to you is this. Rely on the Spirit for everything you do. So are you relying on the Spirit? The correct answer here is yes. And amen to that. Father, we praise you for this day. Father, we thank you for this book that you have left us, the words that you have given us, answers that you have given us in those times of, of frustration, those times that we don't know what to say or do. Father, help us to make sure that we're using this book. And in that, help us to rely upon the Spirit to show us, to teach us, to enlighten us to your words. Father, we oftentimes, and maybe some are today, their board is on fire. Satan's been hitting them hard, and they haven't gotten them extinguished. I pray, Father, that today that you would ex extinguish that fire, put their board out, and regrow them, Father. Make them strong again. 
give them peace and courage to head back out into this world. We sang a song earlier that said that we are getting ready for battle. Father, every day we need to be ready for the battle ahead. And we can only do that with your help. We can only do that with the Spirit who lives inside of us. Father, we praise you that we can rely on that Spirit. And we praise you, Father, for Jesus. And we ask this all in his blessed name. Amen.